For the last month or so, I've been going on ride-alongs with different police officers and municipality police officers. It has been completely eye-opening and I have to tell you that there's some things that I've never seen before that I'm now seeing. And in some of the areas that I now represent because we have new districts, I see vast poverty like never before. There are entire blocks that are completely vacant and empty. On top of that, you have school districts that are failing. And most of the people that I find out, most of the people, the police officers tell me, don't even have jobs. So you have poverty, you have a bad school district, and then you have communities that are not engaged in children's lives. So what happens? These young people have a lot of anger inside of them. They're angry because they're poor. They're angry because they are in bad school districts. They're angry because they don't have the, the infrastructure that they need, not only in their household, but in the community. So there's a lot of anger that's going on in these young people's minds today. And that is one of the things that I want to address in this gang membership activity. I want to know why these kids are getting involved in gangs and have a complete disregard for other people's lives. That's number one. But we also have found on these ride-alongs that these children, they want to better themselves. They try to better themselves. But let me tell you about some of this gang activity as I have learned about it. Right behind me, you'll see a marking. In our community, you'll see markings on buildings. You'll see them on businesses, on, on garage doors. You'll see this, and it's, it's, it's evident everywhere. You will also see bullets inside of homes, on homes. And this is prevalent. This is normal for some areas of our community in St. Louis County, and it's not acceptable. So at this point, we are at a time where we're going to have to engage and interact with these kids who deserve a better life. And I know in my heart of hearts that they want to have a better life. Poverty is generational, unfortunately. And these kids at times don't see a way out. They absolutely don't. And until they see others that are moving out of the hood, they will not strive to better themselves. So what do we do? What kind of approach do we take? First, we need to identify parents who are not active in their children's lives. That's unacceptable. Everything starts in the home first, and then the community is accountable for the safety and the health of any community. That is number two. But on top of that, we need to have educational systems that are productive and do the complete wraparound for every student. It is important for you to know that when these kids who are living in poverty in areas of high unemployment, it's very difficult for them to look at their studies or to read and to write and to have the literacy that they need so that they can achieve and get to the next level. No, they have problems that exist in their lives. Many of these kids come to school with dirty clothes or who haven't eaten for days. This is the reality for many of these gang members. It is a sad reality. No one wants to live in a community where there's extreme poverty and disrespect for another person's life. We have to do something and we have to do it now. One of the reasons why I sponsored Senate Bill 124 is because the national conversation has been on Bushmasters, AK-47s, and the universal coverage. I support all of those things, but that is not the issue that is occurring in the urban areas. That is not our issue. Our issue is that young black men have easy access to guns, live in high poverty areas, and are trying to get out of the hood, as some say. So what they do is engage themselves in this violent activity that's either going to land them in jail or they're going to die. They only have two options right now. And there are a couple of things that I've noticed in this entire experience is once you've put in your time, that's a terminology that I didn't even know before last week, once you put in your time and, and you put in the work, as people like to say, your life is gone. It's done. You've already committed a murder. You've already robbed someone. You've already raped someone. And at that point, if you try to get out of a gang, 
you will not have the opportunity to live your life. What a gang does is provide protection for you. And if your colleagues, if your members, your co-members of a gang know that you want to get out, there's a consequence to getting out of that. And that's why it is so important to address the needs of our children before they're in high school, not even in middle school. But we have to start engaging and dealing with this issue of gang activity when kids are in elementary school. By the time a kid reaches third grade, he or she has already been exposed to extreme poverty. They already know what it's like for a mom to get beaten. I mean, many kids see this on a regular basis. So how do they treat other women? We're going to have to deal with it. We're going to have to be open and honest about it. But the reason why I'm doing this is because there is a lack of attention of people who are looking at what is occurring in our communities, our black communities, our urban communities. And that's what I'm here for. I want you to know what my perspective is. And I want everyone else to know what's going on in our hood. And there are many people who are out there who are against my bill. And I say to them, does a black life not count equally to the life of any other child?